Hey everyone, I want to bring to you a really interesting case study um, of a 22 year old Italian woman in good health um, who doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs, eats well, exercises, um, has her stress under control, and also uh, is generally feeling in good health, but she has this premature gray hair. So as with everyone, I encouraged her to get all of her blood biomarkers checked just to look for any vitamin, mineral, um, or antioxidant deficiencies. I wanted her to check her hormones, in particular thyroid hormone, which we know is correlated with hair loss as well as depigmentation or gray hair. And then I wanted to make sure that any underlying infections like H. pylori or Candida were treated if they were there. Um, she came back with her test results and she was in great shape. No, uh, no issues with deficiencies or hormonal imbalance uh, or any kind of underlying infection. So I wanted to dig a bit deeper and asked her what her stress levels were like. And she came back and said that actually a few years ago, it had been very stressful because she had experienced a hemorrhagic stroke, a, a cerebral hemorrhage. This is basically a bleed on the brain. So there are two types of stroke, ischemic, where you basically stop blood flow. And the other one is a hemorrhagic stroke. That's where the blood um, you know, the, it, the vessel burst and you get this bleed on the brain. And it is very closely correlated with coronary artery disease. So as soon as she said this, I knew this was the issue because coronary artery disease is very highly linked with premature gray hair. And I have done a video on this previously that especially in young people, if you have this, um, the likelihood of a uh, coronary artery issue is much higher than in the general population where you don't have this gray hair issue going on. And naturally for Valeria, the issue is, can I repigment my hair? Like, am I gonna be stuck with this gray hair forever? So I looked this up and I came across a really interesting study that um, was done in 1920, that was done in um, 2022. And it looked at a drug specifically for individuals who had had cerebral hemorrhages. And what this drug did, it, uh, it's an anti-inflammatory, by the way. Um, it actually led to the repigmentation of hair in some of the participants. So this is the study. Uh, cerebrolysin induces hair repigmentation and the five individuals that they are profiling are three men, two women, median age of 71, and the age range was 63 to 77. But check out, in particular, this lady here. Can you just see that before treatment, during treatment, and then look afterwards, her hair is back to where it should be. And just check out the texture change. Do you see the shine on her hair? That's a really big difference. Now, obviously, some of these other folks, you can see the progression, and they all have different levels of both repigmentation, but also the hair is filling back in. This individual has much thicker hair than they did here. So um, that is, that's fascinating. It's very similar to the study that was done in Spain of stage four lung cancer patients who were given immunotherapy and those who responded to the immunotherapy, about 28% actually had this hair repigmentation result as a side effect. I mean, pretty nice side effect, right? And it says to me that what's happening is that the body is being brought back into balance and that it can now allocate resources in the body back towards things that are normally considered less important to the survival of the organism or are simply not important at all to the survival of the organism. Let's face it, our hair is attached to 
um, more of an ego boost. It's a vanity marker more than anything. It doesn't have anything to do with our survival as a species. So that I thought was really interesting. Now, what things can Valeria do if she doesn't want to try cerebrolysin? Well, there are two other things that I think would be really interesting for her to, um, to experiment with that are perfectly safe. You can get these in your diet. You don't need to get a permission slip from your doctor to try them. And they are both uh, connected to both better heart health as well as better hair health. So the first thing is spermidine, you know, my favorite polyamine. And um, spermidine will actually put the hair follicle into the antigen or growth phase of the hair bulb life cycle. And so if you don't have spermidine, then the hair follicle will eventually go into the telogen or shedding phase. And that phase, there is no pigment production that happens then. So this is one thing that could be useful, not just for hair growth and hair pigmentation, but also because spermidine is preferentially taken up by cardiomyocytes in the heart. So unlike cells in our hair, skin, and nails, which are constantly replenishing, right? We notice this, we're constantly cutting our nails and our hair. We know that these tissues are growing all the time or the lining of the gut, which renews every five to every um, three to five days, or even our bones, which will completely replace themselves every seven years. Um, our hearts only replace themselves very slowly. So when we're around age 25, only about 1% of all of our heart cells will renew and replace themselves. And by the time we're at my age, 59, you will find that only half a percent of those heart cells will actually um, replace themselves. So essentially, these need to be exquisitely maintained you are only going to get a few of these and you know in my case let's say these are like 1965 era mustang cars i want these vintage cars to be in fantastic condition so they can continue to serve me keep me keep my circulation going and uh, keep me moving and thinking properly as i get older and the way that they do that is through this process of cellular renewal called autophagy. And I've talked about autophagy in loads of other videos, but spermidine crucially activates that autophagic or cell renewal process. Now you can get it in your diet and in all the longevity blue zones of the world um, or longevity hotspots of the world, mm -hmm they're uh, basically eating loads of foods with spermidine. These would be things like fermented tofu. In Japan or Okinawa in particular, that's called natto, N-A-T-T-O. Uh, you can get it in mushrooms. You can get it in green leafy veg. You can get it in broccoli. And fermented foods all have some of the spermidine in it. Legumes are very rich in spermidine. Uh, if you want to look to animal sources, it's pretty rare to find spermidine in, uh, in meat, but you can get it in chicken livers. I know a lot of people say they don't want to eat chicken or duck liver, both of which have high levels of spermidine because that's actually the po most polluted part of the animal, but it does happen to be there. So that's one thing Valeria can do. Uh, she can also take a supplement and my company, Oxford HealthSpan, makes a spermidine supplement derived only from food. And uh, our studies in mice show that it increases uh, keratin uh, in nails and in hair. Um, and we know that spermidine does have a positive impact on hair color. The other thing that Valeria can do is look at glutathione. So, we know that with coronary artery disease, there's a lot of reactive oxygen species. This is, let's just call it inflammation. Um, spermidine is also an anti-inflammatory, but glutathione is the body's master antioxidant. And I've talked about glutathione in 
a number of my other videos. It's one of my favorite, uh, it's my, it is my favorite antioxidant. Why? Because it's the body's master antioxidant. You can get it in things like avocados, green leafy veg again. So that green leafy veg is, is actually good for both the spermidine and the glutathione. So a bit of a double effect there. And uh, you, can, uh, you can also get it as a supplement. Uh, in that case, I would highly recommend getting a liposomal version of glutathione uh, as it tends to get broken down in the gut and you want it to actually stay intact until it gets to the cells. So um, I would definitely look at that. Uh, as mentioned, some studies show that lack of glutathione is one of the potential root causes of this coronary artery disease. So I hope that this has been helpful. And Valeria, thank you so much for sharing your question with us. Um, for anybody watching, if you've liked this video, found it useful, think that it might be helpful to someone else, please share it. Please consider subscribing. Every subscription matters. And if you yourself have a medical mystery or a, what I want to say, medical gray hair mystery, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'll do my best to do some research. Again, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm simply a patient who's hacked her own, um, her own illness and reversed three autoimmune conditions. So um, I'm interested in this. I find it really fascinating and I'm always interested in safe cures um, or things that assist that you don't need to get your doctor's permission to take. So in the case of spermidine and glutathione, you know, yes, in your diet, always the best way and uh, always looking for ways to, uh, to help you empower yourself with knowledge, tips, tricks, tools to live your best life and stay healthy. So thanks again so much for watching and see you next time.